Hi, my name is Rachel. Welcome back to another YouTube video. I just finished quarter three of the school year. So now I'm on spring break and then we just have nine more weeks for the fourth quarter. Once I'm back, I fully finished grading and everything fully checked out all my new seating charts, all of my planning throughout the entire rest of the year is all caught up. On. Now I'm just going to enjoy my spring break. So let's just hop into the video. All right, so now I am going to change, go on a walk, and then I also have a massage. So kicking off the spring break, right. And this is my third year working as a teacher, so I'm kind of used to the whole flow of everything with when I get breaks, when I have to push through a little bit more. And I will say that when I have breaks and I don't have any plan and I just end up sitting around and being lazy, I do not enjoy that. I like to be productive. I like to have a goal and something to push towards. So that's why I like to be very busy. <laughs> I'll miss you, Jameson. <laughs> Pretzel, are we gonna go for a walk? Let's go. So before I get into my little spiel about why I like to stay busy and productive even when I'm on breaks and why honestly the teaching schedule drives me legitimately insane having so many breaks sometimes, like yes, it is difficult to push through during times and it is stressful and I see why breaks are there. They're there so the kids don't kill each other and so that teachers can literally stay there and stay sane. But anyways, nonetheless, this is my primary squat day, week three. Everything's super, super light, no top sets even. I had a four by four pause at 205 pounds, three by high bar at 175 pounds, and I had some sp uh, not split squats, I had some RDLs with 55s in each hand, and then I had a couple of other lower body accessories and core that I won't show in this video. But why I like to stay busy, meaningful, and productive at all points of time is my main driving factor in life is growth. Like with powerlifting, I like to push myself and I like to see that measurable, sustainable progress over time. It's really rewarding, even if I have other goals in fitness like maintaining good body composition or getting more stable or mobile or flexible or whatever it may be. I like to always be pushing myself. Like that's why I don't like bodybuilding because it's very minimal changes that you see over time and it's not really very motivating to me. But when I'm over break, I'm trying to push myself intellectually, figure out what I'm curious about, try new things, experiment with new things. I don't like to stay stagnant, like I'm definitely not going to be a teacher forever. It is good and valuable for this time and phase of my life, but I've had a bunch of different careers already. I'm 28 and I've worked as a personal trainer, as a police officer, and now a teacher. I've done a lot of different things. I've gotten a bachelor's degree, undergrad, um, and master's degree teaching credential. But I'm always liking to push myself and decide where I truly want to end up because honestly I'm not sure but if I just stay stagnant don't push myself I'll never find out. <laughs> it is already the last day of spring break it is Sunday and I go back to work tomorrow. I've had essentially the same routine every single day over break which is I wake up I do some work pertaining to my job um, for about three hours in the morning and then I will stretch for 30 minutes then I'll go to the gym and then obviously there's eating involved but Yes, this is the last morning of getting to enjoy the relaxation before having to get back on my early wake up schedule. Sadness. <laughs> so by the time I finish my little whole morning routine, it's not really a morning routine, it's more like an afternoon routine as well because the gym and eating out for lunch or making lunch or whatever it is ends up taking a long time. And by the time I'm done with the gym, it's like 4.30. So then I go home, do some more work. And then I walk my dog at around 5.36 and we've been going a little bit longer, like four mile walks and then I'll go home stretch again and then either make dinner or eat out dinner and then just relax, enjoy the evening, watch some television shows. I've been watching Lost with my husband. It's been really good. And then I stretch again and I have a whole little like evening routine situation. But basically I've been working a lot still, even though it's break, it's just more relaxation embedded in the work time and obviously no chaotic situations since just working with myself and not with a bunch of students going crazy but yeah it's been a nice peaceful relaxing break but ready to get back dialed in finish out this school year and i've got all of my work outfits for the week ahead all planned out i literally do this every week it makes it so much easier to get ready super fast in the morning oh big stretch so it's actually really funny because for the first time ever when spring break rolled around i literally did not feel like i needed a break which showed that i was getting into more of a rhythm i'm kind of getting the hang of it <laughs> even though i have like as i've mentioned many many times i have like the most challenging classes that you could possibly teach for your mental sanity um but i had this feeling of when i got off break like yeah it'll be nice to have the extra space to focus on some different goals and whatnot but i was like 
man, like, I feel like I could be sh keep pushing through. I wish this break was just, like, pushed out a little bit. And I think that's because we had the luxury of having President's Day week, like, not complaining at all about my schedule. Um, but, yeah, um, it's nonetheless, no matter if you need the break, if you don't need the break, when you come back, it, you get out of rhythm. Like, I still kept the same bedtime every day, but I was not getting up at the same time every day. So when I got back to work, it hit me hard, and it's always really hard to get back into the rhythm that first day. So this is my first workout after going back to work, and I was extremely fatigued because it was difficult to sleep. But already by Tuesday, I was already synced in, adapt, dialed in. I'm getting better at, like, bouncing back quickly, which is nice. Just popping in for a quick little evening physique update and then getting back into routine update. All right, I'm about to get ready for bed. It's Tuesday night and I'm already like so much more locked in and dialed into routine, which is so nice because I had major Sunday scaries after the break. Like I was ready to get back into everything, but I was like, I don't know what's gonna happen. And you know what, Monday was really fatiguing, but I was so tired Monday night that I just passed out. So I think I've got the momentum to just like and be more present and in the moment and just push through the rest of the year, but yeah. All right, so this is my first week back, first week of quarter four after spring break, and we have nine weeks left of the school year. We're talking about nine weeks, and then we have another two days for finals, but pretty much just nine weeks. So I have my whole entire plan for literally the whole rest of the year, which is super nice. And the big thing for me is when you're a teacher in California, you basically have to do a year of student teaching, so that doesn't really count as your actual first year of teaching. And then you have two years of teaching to actually clear your credential. There's a whole induction program that you have to do. So I have a lot of data that I have to collect over the next month. So a lot of my month is not so much focused on planning as is on the data collection and what I need to get to have that credential clearing interview in May. So lots of work but it keeps me busy it keeps me motivated to get through the rest of the year so i'll show you some of that right now so basically you have to pick one of the teacher standards and i started with 2.3 and then i ended up switching to 2.6 which is all about routines and procedures getting your classroom to run smoothly and then um, this was my growth goal to increase the number of positive teacher to student interactions and student to student interactions specifically student to student because there's a lot of issues there um, with getting them to, you know, be nice to each other. <laughs> um, these are all the action steps. So there's six different categories in which I have to collect data. And then specifically, it's really hard to do this data sheet because you have to actually track what kids are doing while you're teaching. And so it's kind of annoying if I'm being honest. And then there's like lots of student surveys and work samples you have to collect. Um, but this is a very, very rough draft of everything like i have hyperlinks of all the data i collected i have this systems project that i did three times throughout the year which i'm using as student data and also cl classroom management things that i just added in but very very rough draft thinking for now um all of the stuff that's like in pink and highlighted is stuff that i still need to focus on so yeah lots of work still ahead <laughs> <Pretty. laughs> i think she's mad because i'm filming this clip before stretching routine and she's like dialed and she knows the bedtime routine but anyways thank you so much for watching today's youtube video please let me know what you want to see in future videos just going to continue with random life updates lifting updates topics whatever comes from mind as long as i don't have any suggestions but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll see you in two weeks next wednesday for the next video bye